Thank you all for, for coming. Uh, what I want to do in a few minutes is simply to share with you some of the most exciting plans we have in Kenya to study elephants with our students. And um, this research is scheduled to go on for five years from uh, this year to 2017. And I just want to show you the need for this research. And I'm sure that when we come back next time, I'll be sharing a lot of data. So we, we want to ask elephants some questions and actually learn from elephants. And this, in, in terms of um, ecological theory, uh, is a way of twisting the way we ask questions. Because when we ask questions in science, we tend to look at animal habitats and animal space from the human eye. But suppose we just, suppose we just looked at resources and asked questions differently, maybe from the animal point of view. Uh, maybe instead of saying the elephant needs that and this and that, maybe we ask the elephant and we find ingenious ways of getting answers from elephants. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do in a few minutes. All right. Uh, I'll put this map because it's a map of those who have been to Kenya. I have alumni here and parents and many other people. That's a map of southern Kenya. And Amboseli National Park, uh, you can see it there in green, uh, is one of the places where we have some reasonable herd of elephant which have been studied for many years. It's a very, very important population because it has rarely been poached and it has, over the years, provide a baseline from which so many insights on elephant conservation has been caught and really influenced conservation in uh, the world. So, the research is going to take place in southern Kenya around Amboseli National Park, but what you see are Maasai group ranches. There are about six of them, and they do own land in that area, and Amboseli National Park is not actually fenced. So animals can, elephants can come in and out, and that area forms one of the remaining last important areas for conservation in Kenya. So around the park and the Maasai group ranches and down to Tanzania near Kilimanjaro, that is an area that we are going to look at elephant ranging and be able to ask questions about what they need, especially space needs, and see how they are interacting with human beings. Now, uh, I am an SFS teacher and most of the alumni in the group, or if you will be alumni in future, if we do a fast circle of discussion, the first thing I'll ask you is, why did you come to Kenya and what do you hope to see? Now, if you ask that question, for most of our students, the elephant will be on the list. The list may be the big five, but the elephant will be one of the animals that students will really want to see. If you ask that question to the tourists, they'll give you the same answer. So why elephants? Why are all of us fascinated by elephants? Why are elephants extremely important ecologically, but also in the, in the process of conserving species? and the way we interact and the way we query humanity responsibility to other species. So the first answer that most people give is that it's a member of the big five. All right, we pause there for a minute. I don't know if everybody in this group knows what the big fives are. Hello? <laughs> if you know all of them, would you raise your hand so I can put you on the spot a little bit? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yeah, you are doing well. Yes. All right. Good, good. Every one of us, you take that as home assignment. I'm not going to give you an answer. But uh, there are two herbivores and two carnivores. And uh, there are, there's a lot of story about how the whole concept of the big five began. But everybody, uh, when we ask this question uh, and we ask tourists, they were all about 90% of the people are aware of the big five, but only about 50% can correctly name them. There are interesting examples like what hawk is a member of the big five, crocodile, a member of the big five, giraffe. So if you get it right, that's good. But elephants are a member of the big five. It's a highly sought group of animals that influence tourism attraction in East Africa. And one of them have been given by Bernard. This is one of them. 
In ecology, elephant are keystone species. They are extremely important in diversifying habitats for other species. Uh, their foraging behavior, in which they open up a dense bush, is extremely good in providing diversity for other different species. In terms of tourism practice, elephants are a flagship species. If you are selling a tourism product, especially in Africa, and you don't have an elephant, you are missing something big that will not bring you tourism dollars. So it is a big species in terms of tourism uh, planning. Now in terms of an ambassador, a species that carries the flag for being an ambassador for other species in the world, there are very few that can do the job the elephant does. In fact, in Africa we say that if you cannot conserve an elephant, then you cannot conserve anything. If you are able to conserve an elephant, it's most likely that in that process, you'll also uh, conserve many other species that are too small to be noticed. I don't know how many students, past students I have here, but maybe a tick tick, you know what I'm talking about, so small to be noticed, a hair, you know. So an elephant speaks for all those other species and say, give us space so that we can thrive, and no species can take that flag from the elephant. But another interesting thing is just the way the elephants carry on its life. It is a very intelligent animal. Uh, <laughs> did people say that it has a brain of five kilograms? Five kilograms brain is one of the most intelligent animals outside the primate family. It, it has a social organization that reflects and mirrors that of a human being. You have a matriarch related females uh, that carry about 10 to 15 or whatever size, they raise the family together, they empathize together, they work together, they find water together. The social organization is just a mirror for uh, the human family and that's why it's a darling for many people, including researchers. I wanna get some water. So I'll go a little bit fast. There are issues about Space, if you are elephants, let me ask a question. How many of you know how an average elephant weighs? Let me say a grown up uh, adult male. How heavy is it? 12,000 pounds. 12, pounds, okay, I have a problem. I think in kilograms, <laughs> <laughs> not in pounds, or, yeah, or in tons. Uh, I do not know the conversion. If you are, uh, you live in both worlds, you would help me here. But the, a female, an adult female weighs three tons, and an adult male weighs five tons. If you are an animal this big, you forage a lot. You eat a lot. <laughs> you, the elephants can eat for 16 hours nonstop. They are non-ruminants, so they eat throughout, yeah? And if you are eating that, uh, a lot of food like that, you need a very big space. And so it is extremely important to provide sufficient space with sufficient resources for elephants. Amboseli National Park is only 392 square kilometers, for example. Uh, according to carrying capacity estimates, it can only carry about 200 elephants. But right now, it has 1,500 elephants. That's so many, we need space outside. And that space is not there because it is owned by the Maasai people. So there are beginning to be local extinctions of species because of the compression and lack of sufficient space, which can provide forage for elephants and other uh, uh, species. So that is beginning to be a problem. And that's why this study is designed uh, under collaboration for Kenya Wildlife Service in the National Fund for Animal Welfare, IFO, that Kisui talked about, and SFS in Kenya. We have designed a five-year ranging uh, research program to be able to see space and range from the elephant's eye and ask critical questions that can be able to guide policy and help us to conserve elephants for posterity. So one of the questions you would ask is about homes. So if you are an elephant, I would ask you, do you have just one home or do you have many homes? Uh, do you use all of them? For how long do you use these homes? What triggers you to move from one home to another and what routes do you use? Elephants have very specific habitats that they use as core areas. The home range is extremely important, but it's important to know all the total range that is useful for elephants so that you can understand how to conserve it. Second question, I would ask things about the route. Route, we call it in Africa route, but it's route, so I'm learning. 
uh, what routes do you use uh, from one home to another? Okay, what route do you use and why do you use some routes and not others? Uh, it's, if I compare those routes to random places, would there be a pattern for what you are selecting for? Do you use those routes alone or do you use with some members of your clan or some members of your herd? The males always are either lonely or make loose pairs. Do they use the same routes? What pathways do you use between your homes? And why are those routes important for your viability as a species? I will then also ask uh, questions about threats they face. And there are three categories of threats. It would be direct threats against the elephant as an animal and cover some of the things you've seen uh, that happened to lions. But things like direct or spearing of elephants also occur. Poaching is a big, big problem that has almost driven the species to extinction. And there are, so there are direct threats to the elephant. There are direct threats to the home space that the elephant need. Because some of the threats facing large mammals in the world today is loss of habitat. So whether those habitats are being converted by human interests and human land uses, or they are being uh, destroyed or compromised by natural changes in climate change. The world is becoming more hotter and drier. Elephants drink about 300 to 400 liters of water every single day. They need water, they need food, and so that affects their habitat and uh, translates into high uh, uh, infant mortality and uh, low survival rates. So we will ask those questions about threats, threats to the elephant itself, threats to the home or home range of space they use, and threat to the corridors and just the ability to range and move freely. The freedom to roam, all right? So there are threats uh, in relation to that. We are also going to ask questions about relatives and friends. When you move from homes, do you meet other friends? Do you move, meet other hearts? Do you meet other animals of the same clan? Who do, whom do you meet? Where do they go? Where do they live? What is the relationship in terms of using space together? Are you separated in space and in time? And what are the implications of that? Now, later in the other slides, I'll put that in the context of why that is important. And of course, human beings are a very uh, <laughs> species that always think only about their welfare. So we have to ask other species to play to our tune. So we ask if they can uh, what sort of we, we should ask what we can do to, to help mitigate the threats against elephants and also ask them how they can be useful to us, tourism and other stuff. And I think that these, these are debates in conservation where we expect economic uh, contribution of species and economic costs of conservation and stuff like that. So it's important to tease out the contribution, not just ecological or other services to man, but simply in, in econo uh, eco economic terms. So the way we are going to answer these questions is simply to, to do satellite tracking and radio coloring the way we've seen done in uh, Lyons. Uh, on fourth, uh, between fourth and sixth this month, we are going to color our first six elephants to be able to track them uh, using satellite uh, technology. And next year, we'll um, be able to call another 11 of them. And from that coloring, we'll be able to follow elephants and try to see their range and their space and their challenges from their own eyes and be able to, to influence policy that will be, will be important in elevating that. So if we ask those questions, really what we are looking at is if we can be able to estimate home ranges and uh, dispersal patterns for elephants, dispersal routes, and what that means in terms of elephant survival. Elephants are long-ranging species. They can walk up to 100 kilometers in a day. They really need space. But in third world countries like Kenya, where population is increasing at 4% uh, per annum, and space is real a problem, there is co co competition for that, and there is contraction for space, and that is increasing the probability of conflicts, and especially neg negative ones with elephants. So the first question will be able to help us to uh, elaborate issues of range, uh, home range, as well as the dispersal patterns. Habitat preference are very important in conservation. Uh, animals do not live at random in space. There are resources that are critical for them, forage, water, salt lake, um, places to rest, thermal cover. Animals have extraordinary needs, 
just like human beings. And they choose actively. We want to know whether there are preference for certain habitats and certain safe routes and what human interference like pastoralism is causing to those choices that elephants make and which they are made for many years in order to survive as a species. Um, threats, we want to uh, be able to elaborate their severity, uh, their prevalence and intensity. And as I said, if we can be able to get a, 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 a handle on this, categorize them and look at the indices of threat and what, uh, what um, uh, and how those threats translate into direct threats to population dynamics and viability, that's going to be critical. If you are following news now, Kenya just in last week found 100 uh, kilograms of uh, ivory in Mombasa and there seems to be an increasing rate of poaching. We've lost some 11 of them in Tsavo recently, and we are told that on the black market, the price of ivory is now overtaking the price of gold. And so this is presents actually in the language of the movies, clear and present danger. All right, and this one is very, very important. Metapopulation is an important way of looking at the viability of ecosystems. In Southern Africa, in Southern Kenya, we do not know whether the elephants in Amboseli National Park are the same as those in Chulu or those in other ranges. And we don't know how, if there are separate subpopulations, how they are interacting each other in what we call a metapopulation. In certain uh, animals that occur as a metapopulation, you might have a subpopulation acting as a sink where there is a lot of mortality and others acting as a source where there is a lot of pathrate so that they replenish their habitats. There are others that would be stable and others that are declining. We do not know whether we have a metapopulation situation. We do not know what are the subpopulations. We don't know the details of those population dynamics. It will be very critical as a refreshed way of looking at the future population viability of elephants uh, in Amboseli. And that's why we're asking the question, where you go, do you have some relatives there? Whom do you meet? How are you related? It will involve doing genetic mapping and many other uh, studies that will elaborate if indeed there is a metapopulation situation in southern Kenya or not. And that's critical for elephant policy. Then there are issues about economic costs and contribution of elephants from tourism to um, whether they can inspire Maasai to set up space as conservation areas and reap from tourism, and the really cost of conserving an elephant in terms of uh, or lost opportunities, killing of uh, livestock, they kill them, and general insecurity, to other advantages of having um, elephants. And that will be very important to be able to elaborate that. So this study will take place in southern Kenya near Kilimanjaro and will go all the way to northern step, uh, step a part of Tanzania, we want to see if elephants are able to move from Amboseli to Kilimanjaro and Serengeti and even to Masai Mara. So it will be a cross-border um, research and we are actually collaborating with Tawiri, uh, which is a, a research, a research uh, organization in Tanzania to be able to get proper information for that. So before I stop, all of us have a duty to give voice to the voiceless. Uh, SFS students and faculty and all of us who can be able to speak for conservation of species. We should not forget that. I studied it at the University of Idaho. During my time, there were so many debates about um, the spotted owl and, and the, the old growth. And the courage for humanity to consider other species and their viability is something we need to do. Because in my thinking, I think that is the rent that we pay for living on Earth. Thank you very much.